Erik Stanislaus Stenbock, Count of Bogesund, was a writer of Estonian origin. W. B. Yeats describing him as a scholar, connoisseur, drunkard, poet, pervert, most charming of men. Born in 1860 in Cheltenham, Great Britain, and originally christened Eric Magnus Andreas Harry as the son of Count Eric Stenbock and Lucy Sophia Fredericks of Manchester. His father died when Eric was quite young, his mother soon remarrying. A sickly child, he first entered school at Wiesbaden, Germany, then at Balliol College at Oxford, but he left college early. However, it was here where he in fact managed to convert to Catholicism. His first book, an exceedingly rare collection of poetry titled Love, Sleep and Dreams, was published in 1881. In 1884, he moved to Bruges to escape his debts that he acquired with his printers and remained in poverty until 1885 when he inherited the family fortune upon the death of his grandfather, Count Magnus. By 1887, he had developed both a dependency on alcohol as well as on opium. A noted eccentric, Stenbock kept both lizards and toads in his rooms while keeping a bear in his garden. Francis King said of Stenbock's eccentricities in The Magical World of Aleister Crowley that he made an attempt to understand his own homosexuality in terms of traditional occultism, eventually coming to view his condition as an aspect of vampirism and lycanthropy. Torn between Catholicism and Diabolism, he died deluded that the huge doll was his son and heir. He wrote only one collection of short stories, Studies of Death, which appeared a year before his own passing. Stenbock died in 1895 at Whitdean Hall by Brighton. The first story of Studies of Death, Hilas, concerns a painter who finds a model for his next painting, coincidentally the son of an acquaintance whom he takes on as an apprentice. But we soon menaced by falling madly in love with a dangerous society woman and multiple divorcee. Narcissus is the story of a vain man disfigured by a rejected lover and of his adoption of an abandoned blind child he meets one day in the park. The death of a vocation has a man and woman meet who both wish to take the monastic life and who marry each other in order to enable the woman to join the convent against her family's wishes, planning to dissolve the marriage by having it never be consummated. However, the best made plans of mice and men... The Old Amor focuses on the family of a great craftsman of musical instruments from Italy who wishes to fashion a viol de Amor, which, however, may only receive its best results when fashioned from the skin of a person who is close to its maker. The Egg and the Albatross takes place on the fictional island of Varegna concerning Marina, the foundling slash orphan who lives alone in an old abandoned lighthouse following the death of her foster parents and who sells birds' eggs and ornaments made from seaweed in the market, and of her bizarre ways and her strange familiarity with animals. The true story of a vampire, meanwhile, concerns the tragic fate of a young son of a Polish noble family living in Styria who becomes romantically entangled after being visited by a male vampire whom his father brings home one night from the train station after he had missed his train. Finally, The Worm of Luck is a tragic story of a young gypsy youth, his short-lived fame upon the stage with his violin, and what came to pass when he came back home after seven years. A collection sometimes moody but never boring, it is a perfect mix of decadent tales for the supernatural and commonplace, and is a good example of the English fin de siècle, or however you wish to pronounce that and is certainly well written for a first attempt at writing fiction, which makes it even more sad that Stenbock died at such a young age before he was able to fashion any other work.